Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to style up your HTML select dropdowns using CSS. Okay, so this right here is going to be the final product. Now, I do want to show you straight away that if I was to press on this, we can see I'm still using the default styles that get applied by the web browser for each one of our options. Now, the main reason for this um, is to not only keep our code simple, but also it might be difficult difficult to ensure that your solution, if you do want to style each option, um, your solution, uh, it might be hard to make it, uh, you know, easy to use on mobile devices because each mobile device is going to have their own way of presenting these options to the end user. And you're probably better off in the long run to just let the browser do that work um, to ensure that it's going to be easy to use for every single one of your users, no matter what device they're using. Okay, so at least we can style up the actual select, which in most cases is going to be good enough. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to, of course, create that select drop down. So inside the text editor, let's firstly just create a select element to actually work with. So we can say select right here. We don't need the name and ID for the purpose of this video. Of course, yourself, um, you might need the name attribute, okay? However, we are going to be adding the class attribute and setting this to something like select. So now, uh, essentially, by adding this class, we're able to target only specific select elements that we want to style because maybe you don't want to have these styles applied to every single select on your page. Okay, so now inside here, we can specify a few options. The first one is going to be our default disabled option. So we can say right here, disabled and selected. Inside here, we can just say make. And of course, that one is going to be our disabled element that gets displayed by default to the user on page load. Okay, it's also going to be disabled as we can see right here. Let's go back inside here now and make a few more properties. We can just say Honda. Uh, let's go with also Toyota. And lastly, we can choose to use Mazda. And I think three is going to be just fine for this example. Let's save this and refresh and we get something like this. So now let's move on to the CSS to, of course, start up to make it look nice. So first up, let's target this select class and we're going to be adding some padding. We're going to say padding eight pixels top and bottom and 12 pixels left and right. Uh, typically, I like to have my padding on the top and bottom slightly smaller than what I use for the left and right. I think it looks pretty good. We're going to also add some color. Let's make this uh, just a dark gray a background color and this one's going to be uh, just a light gray so a very light gray there um, a border of one pixel and then solid and then a slightly darker gray compared to the one used in the background color um, and also a cursor of pointer um, and finally we can also say border radius and set this to be something like five pixels if you want to go this route. So obviously you don't need to set all these properties here if you don't want to. And of course you can make these whatever color you like. Um, but now let's just save this and refresh the page and we get something like this. So of course uh, quite close to what we have inside here. But now uh, let's move on to uh, just applying some styles whenever the user interacts with or hovers over our options. Sorry, um, our select drop down. Okay, so for this, we're going to be saying just down here, we're going to say select colon focus and select colon hover. Okay, so making use of the focus and hover pseudo class here. Essentially, this just means that whenever the user interacts with the select drop down or they hover over it, we're going to be applying these styles. So we're going to say outline and set this to be none. This removes the default blue outline, which gets displayed to the user by the web browser. And instead, we're going to say uh, border. And let's just set the border to be 1px solid and then using um, a darker gray compared to the one used up here. Okay, let's save this now and refresh one more time. And we can see right now uh, when hovering over the input field, we can see, of course, the border color changes. And of course, uh, when choosing an option, we can see uh, those styles uh, uh, 
persistent, okay? Um, now also we can see down here that the background of the options has been changed to be the same grey used above. So um, to essentially revert this change, we can go back inside here and we can target select and then option and for each option we can set the background to be just white. Now, um, when styling up these options keep in mind that uh, these of course refer to the default uh, browser options okay so you can only style two properties here the background and the color just keep that in mind let's save this and refresh and now we can see they go back to their white color used uh, at the very beginning so we are almost done uh, we now need to essentially just replace uh, this uh, little little uh, triangle right here with something like this and also remove the default browser styling for the drop down menu so back inside here let's just put a comment and we're going to be saying replace the default styling then put in brackets here arrow okay so to achieve this we're going to be saying appearance set this to be none um, then webkit appearance set this to be uh, none just down here and we can see here Moz Appearance also setting this to be none. So of course, uh, by having these two properties, uh, we're going to allow us to, of course, uh, you know, support uh, uh, most, if not all, browsers. Okay, so these two properties here are going to be removing the default styling, including um, the actual arrow that um, that appears on the site. So now let's save this and refresh, and now we can see, of course, the arrow is gone, but also. Um, the amount of space between the text here and uh, the sides is slightly smaller and of course it's now in line with the example I showed earlier. Okay, let's go back inside here now and actually insert that custom uh, little drop down arrow. So to achieve this we're going to be using SVG. So if you haven't used SVG before, um, don't worry, it's not going to be too complicated. Um, let's just go down here and set the background image to be a data URL. So we're going to be saying here URL and using our single quotes here, we're going to be saying data and then colon image uh, forward slash SVG plus XML. Okay, then putting a semicolon, we can say UTF-8, then a comma, and then right here, this is where we specify our SVG to, um, to of course, represent the actual uh, little uh, triangle. Okay, so I might just go inside a new window here and change my format to be SVG um, or sorry XML, my mistake, so XML and here I'm going to be typing out the SVG for the actual uh, drop down uh, arrow. Okay, so for this it's going to be uh, SVG, going to be specifying the namespace here, so XML NS equal to HTTP forward slash uh, w3.org 2000 and then SVG um, then we can just uh, say also width and set this to be 100 and a height also of uh, sorry 50 so 100 for the width and 50 for the height and the reason for that is because of course a little arrow is going to be double as wide as it is uh, compared to its height and that of course is going to allow us to have an actual arrow that sort of is um, you know, a little triangle okay Let's cut this off now, and inside here, we're going to have one element, and that is going to be a polygon. So we're going to say polygon right here, we're going to be saying points equal to 0, 0 for the first point, and then 100 and then 0 for the second point, then lastly 50 and 50, and this right here is going to draw our three points, so 1, 2, 3, to of course create the triangle, okay, and then we can just say style and set this to be uh, fill then colon now we're going to be uh, using right here a hash so we're going to say hash and then 666 666 so just a medium gray um, and then we can just close that off okay um, so uh, with this we can now essentially put this in a single line and then insert it into our uh, CSS okay so let's go inside here and just do something like that then copy this in the CSS, let's just paste it inside there. Now for the hash here, uh, this needs to be URL encoded, which means let's replace this hash with a percent and then 23, and that right there is gonna give us our hash um, as URL encoded, okay? So now let's save this and then refresh the page and see what we get.
okay to refresh and we get this right here so obviously um, it is not positioned correctly so we need to of course position that background and also uh, give it a size so down here we can say background position and we're going to be saying uh, for the right 10 pixels from the right and top 50% from the top Okay, we can also say background repeat and set this to be none. So no repeat, my mistake. Um, and also a background size of 10px. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. So definitely um, looking a lot nicer compared to the browser one, um, in my opinion. Okay, let's go back inside here now and apply one last style. That is going to be padding right and setting this to be 30 pixels. Now, the reason for 30 is because we have first off here, it's positioned 10 pixels from the right. That's 10. The size is 10 pixels and also we need a 10 pixel gap to be consistent um, uh, with the sides here. So that's going to have, that, so that's going to uh, create our gap um, between the text and of course the actual uh, drop down uh, uh, triangle. Okay, um, now to test this actually works, let's go inside here and copy this make a couple more times. Okay, and let's save this and refresh and we can see, yep, right there, that gap is working perfectly fine. So um, that is how to create a, uh, or that is how to style up your HTML select dropdowns using CSS. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.